tune justin here with you today for breathe by pink floyd i mean this is just an all-time classic guitar song and what a sound now most people are going to ask about the sound straight away so look i'm using a strat tight guitar i'm using the bridge pickup in single coil mode uh, the signal is going into my pedal board and it's being split into two paths one path is going to this audio kitchen amplifier into the universal audio ox box and it's just a straight dry signal a little tiny little bit crunchy but then that's going straight into the door into logic audio the other signal is going through my univibe i'm lucky enough to have an original 60s univibe uh, volume all of the way up and the intensity about two o'clock or something like that it doesn't need to go all of the way up although it can be it didn't seem to make a huge amount of difference if it was up a little bit higher and that signal is going into a Kemper profiler I'm using uh, the 67 Lux Verb 2 a Michael Britt profile which sounds fantastic and that's where most of that swirly effect is coming from there's a little reverb on that amplifier as well so you've got kind of a nice little breadth here of, of sounds it is quite a simple sound. It's mostly about the univibe. That's that where you get that that nice swirly sound. Um, I just found that I can run that. It sounds a little bit more uh, clear if I'm running it with a with a clean signal as well, like a wet dry system. That would be cool. But you know, uh, if you've got a multi effect system, you want to look for something like a univibe and just explore the settings a little bit because that's really one of the key features here of this particular song. As far as the chords go, I've got a simplified acoustic version of this song, which you might want to check out as well. That's just kind of explaining the, the real simple version of this tune. I'm going to take it through with you now in a little bit more detail and show you exactly what's going on, uh, different approaches to some of the fills. Although the fills are quite repetitive, they use quite a lot. So if you get these ones down and listen to it in the vocal part of the song, you'll hear which ones go where. So the first chord we've got here is an E minor 9. So we've got our first finger on the second fret of the fifth string, little finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string. Really lovely sound. We're going to do an up rake for that. So by rake, I mean a slightly slower than a regular strum and probably a bit back further toward the bridge than you might normally strum. You see that really nice crispy thing that brings out the effect really well. So that's happening on beat one. One, two, three E and a four E and a. And we end up with this little pattern where we play the bass note on beat three. And then we've got an upstroke here on the second string and then another one on the third string. And that's the last 16th note of beat three, three E and a four E. And then the second 16th note. So really slowly, one, two, three E and a four E and a. I'm suggesting you use upstrokes here because it'll really help you keep time if you're imagining your hand is making all of these big strumming motions. It doesn't need to be doing big strumming motions, but using the correct picking for the right subdivision of the beat will really help you keep in time well. So we end up with this. One, two, three, and a four, and a one. Now, the second chord is an A chord. Now, I tend to use a first finger bar here rather than the kind of acoustic version that you might have learned before. So just first finger bar right up next to the fret. The other chord that we need is just adding the third finger down the third fret second string, which is A sus4. We end up with this rhythm. One and a two, three E and a four E and. So, fifth string fourth third second and then it's the same rhythm as that first bar the last 16th note of beat three is where we put down the sus and then the second 16th note of beat four we play the uh we lift the finger off and play the second fret one and a two three e and a four e and a one two now this in the third bar we play the bass note on beat one then the up strum the up rake comes on beat two then we've got the same rhythmic pattern again last 16th note of beat three second 16th note of beat four but this time we're playing the thinner string in the second string the first time we played the second string third string now we play the thinner string second string now you can work out the pattern just by listening as to which order he's doing what, where he's picking the thinner string first and where he's playing the second string first if you want. I'm going to try and do it as best as I remember it, but again, I mean, it doesn't really matter to be honest which one you want to do unless you're playing in a super uh, pedantic Pink Floyd tribute band or whatever, then you need to be using your ears a lot and paying attention to this stuff. So first three bars, 
Now we've got another great little fill going on here. Starts the same. But we've gone from here, the A. Open A string again. Second finger sliding from the second fret to the fourth fret on the fourth string. Then first finger is playing the third fret on the second string. And we're going to play that th the second string, open G string, then the fourth string, where second finger is staying there. Now I tend to switch the whole motion here and use uh, third finger on the second fret of the second string and then the open G string again. So it's like an A7 there. Now it's sometimes easier to do the A7 like that. So you've got the same shape. Slide first finger back one fret, second finger back two frets. But for me, that's really twisting my wrist. It feels totally uncomfortable. Some guys like doing it that way, and that's totally cool. I feels easier for me to do that, even though it's a bigger shift to the hand. But then I'm ready for this again. So one and a two and a three E and a four E and a one and a two. And a three E and a four E and a one and a two and a three E and a four E. And so the G is played slightly later on the second sixteenth note. So that note there, the, the C sharp will be played with an up pick, and the G will also be played with an up. Down, down, down. I guess down, down, up, down should be the picking there. I just use all down picks. Down, 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 slide. Up, up, down, up, up. Same again. Now again, there's a few different variations that he plays with this through the tune. I think the, the very first time he plays it is this. That rhythm. One and a two E and a three E and a four E and one and a two and a three E and a four E and Now how fussy you need to be again is just a personal preference. When I'm doing these tunes I like to be as fussy as I can to give you the closest in, you know, closest version that I can get of this tune. But you have to decide to what level you're going to take these things. I do think there's value in learning stuff exactly like the record. Part of the process, the listening to the original, learning new licks, learning new ideas, challenging your own technique to being able to do something that perhaps you couldn't do before. There are advantages, but be aware that you really want to make music. That's the key thing. So if you, you don't want to spend too long trying to get a particular lick if it just doesn't really fit under your fingers. That's my opinion. Then it goes back to the first bar. Then it goes back to the second bar again. But instead of doing playing the individual notes, there's a strum. Pretty insignificant difference, right? But here we go. There's some, a little bit more of the detail for you. That's the first eight bars, and that's a good thing to practice with the end part when it comes to the vocal, because you've just got eight bars of that E minor to A, E minor to A, uh, and then it goes into the second section, the C major seventh chord part, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, so the, the very first one, the intro is kind of extended as two of those eight bar sequences before you get to the C major seven. In this second eight bars, there's a couple of variations on the A chord, which I'm going to go through with you now, uh, which are a little bit more tricky than the other stuff that we've encountered so far. So the first bar of the second eight bar section. 
seen that before. Now we've got this. Okay. So we start with the open A, second finger sliding from the ninth fret to the eleventh fret, but it's just a, uh, it, it's not a timed slide. It's just one and uh, two. So we've played the open G, first finger down on the tenth fret of the second string. Then we play the G string again, and then the fourth string. Then we've got the third finger going down on the 12th fret of the second string, open G string, then the 12th fret on the fourth string. Then we go back to our first chord shape. We do a little up stroke from the second string and then move that shape back two frets and another up stroke from the second string. One and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Then we've got another round, and now we've got another very, very cool little lick. Another one of these beautiful little A tricks. So it's open A, second finger is sliding from the 12th fret to the 14th fret, and this one's like one, two, E, and A. So this is third finger 14th fret of the second string then the open G string one two E and a uh. then we hit the A string again we've moved our hand back two frets and we're going to play open A string 12th fret on the fourth string 12th fret on the second string then the open G so now we go then the open A again 11th fret on the 4th string, 10th fret on the 2nd string. 1, 2, E and a 3, E and a 4, E and 1, 2, E and a 3, E and a 4, E and. So after those two genius A chord variations, it goes back to the same sort of stuff that we've had before. The E minor. A. E minor. A. So it ends up being an eight bars, two eight bar sequences that are going E minor A, E minor A, E minor A, E minor A. Uh, it goes th then to the second section. We need here now a C major seventh chord, but it's over a G bass. So if we start with a regular C, lift off first finger, there's our C major seven. But if you want the G bass note, you, you could finger it this way. So third finger, fourth finger, third fret on the thickest two strings, second finger, second fret on the fourth string always feels to me like it wants to be using fingers one, two, and three, but it really doesn't make any difference. Depends on what feels comfortable for you. One, two, three, and a four. E. You've got that little same pattern that we had at the beginning. Three, and playing the thinner string in the second string. Then we've got B minor, B minor seven, actually, bar chord. Uh, nothing on the thicker string. Second fret, fourth fret, second fret, third fret, second fret. We do the same thing here, one, two, three, e, and up four, e, and so playing the bass note on beat three. And then we're going to do up picks, the thinnest two strings. Then we've got F major seven. Now, again, I, I'm a bit cl clever here because I'm using my thumb on the bass note. My third finger is holding down the third fret of the fourth and fifth strings. Second finger, second fret, third string, first finger first fret second string and open thinner string I suspect that Dave wouldn't have been David rather wouldn't have been playing the fifth string not 100% certain about that but not sure what whether which way he played that chord but anyway that's the F major seven 
then to the G6, same shape up two frets with the thinnest E string ringing out, that's what makes it the sixth chord, the sixth note of the scale. So F, G, 6, D7 sharp 9, fifth fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret with the second finger, first finger, third finger, little finger, often known as the Hendrix chord. And then you use your first finger to flatten out to do a little bar and you lift your little finger off so your first finger is holding down this note here, the D sharp. Then we're back again. This time it's played right on the beat. Should mention as well, so the F major 7. One, two, three, four. G, two, three, four, one. So the D7 sharp 9 is just for one strum on beat 3. And the D7 flat 9, that one, is played on beat 4. And then you're back on the E minor. And that is the tune. So a big chunk of playing this one is about getting the sound, then checking out those little variations. They're really tasty variations and something I'd encourage you to explore on your own as well, using these ideas. Lots of different ways you could use that in it, almost any time you've got an A chord. And same with this one. And here. It's just conceptually a really nice thing. It's using sixths. There's, a, you know, it's a whole kind of theory. It's all notes. In this case, it's of the D major scale. Because it's an A7 chord. Uh, A7 is the five chord in the key of D, so we'd use the D major scale notes uh, for those of you that want to understand a little bit more about what's going on there. The whole pattern, actually, I might as well tell you because it's such a nice thing to play over an A. Both at the 14th fret, this is the second string and the fourth string. Both at the 12th fret. And this is the 11th fret on the fourth string, 10th fret on the second string. Same pattern move down, so third fingers on the ninth fret on the fourth string and eighth fret on the second string. Both in the seventh fret, both in the fifth fret, fourth fret and third fret, fourth fret on the fourth string. And then you've got your A. That's the kind of thing where you're learning these tunes, you want to try and get a little bit more out of it than just learning the tune. So that's the kind of thing where you can go, wow, there's a whole new thing to explore every time I got an A chord or an A7 chord. So I think that's enough. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments over on the website. I check those a lot more often than I check the comments on YouTube. Uh, so that's a good place to answer, ask a question. You have to be a registered user, but being a registered user is free if you're over on the website. Plenty more songs, lots more Floyd coming up for you very soon. If you happen to be over on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support. It means a whole lot. And remember, there'll be a link in the description to take you over to the website where there'll be extra notes and more photos and you can ask questions and all of that sort of stuff. Really hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.